When was the first time that you heard metal music? Do you remember? Um, I mean, it was kind of at the same time. So in Sweden, there was this um, there was this rock radio station, like an hour every week, and then there was a TV show that showed like rock me or heavy metal uh, videos, uh, like you know, half an hour a week, stuff like that. And through that, and to, through friends who were older, or you know, people in school who were older, uh, they listened to you know Iron Maiden and stuff like that. But I think it was kind of like Wasp, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest at the same time, kind of like. Uh, and also, I, a friend of mine, his dad was a musician, and he had like an um, Eddie Van Halen guitar that he made himself, like he striped it and everything like that. So I, he played Van Halen to me when I was maybe 11, something like that, 10 or 11. And uh, then I told my parents that I wanted a heavy metal record. And that's just when uh, Power Slave came out. So I, I got that on cassette. So that was, was my first ever kind of metal record that I had. Uh, but then, uh, yeah, then I was sold. Like I started collecting and trading and copying, you know, on cassette from, from friends because I, did, I couldn't afford enough albums that I wanted. Um, but that's how it started. Like it was kind of like at the same time, like in yeah, 80, 84, 85, um, when we were just kids hanging, hanging out, and the older kids in school they were cooler and they would listen to to cooler music. So that's so we were young and impressionable, and uh, and um, were impressed with that. So we started listening to that too. So that's how it started. So do you remember when you heard it first time, growling? Yeah, um, my buddy. Alexander, who lived in the same block as me and Nicholas and Martin and, and Anders and Anders at the time, um, his older brother had uh, a creator album or EP, the uh, Flag of Hate EP, and he said, Fuck. It's like, and he bought it from his brother, and he told me like, you got to listen to this, and I brought, I remember like clearly, I just had a pretty cool like turntable at the time that I was really proud of, and I, I remember like just bringing it home. And it even had, it was kind of like before CD, but it's still, you could have like, you could do, do a song on repeat. You can choose songs. There was like this highly, like fully automatic turntable, which is super cool. It doesn't exist anymore, but it was cool at the time. And I, so he lended me Flag of Hate and I listened to it constantly. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I didn't understand what I was hearing, but I loved it. And I, so I put it like my vinyl on repeat and just like played, you know, the, the side one over and over and over again, and then side two over and over again, just to get into it. And it was the, the coolest thing I ever heard. And uh, yeah, so that, that's, <laughs> that's how it started for me. And, and then, of course, I started reading about like metal records that were essential and cool. And I, I went to the big cool record store that I loved back then. And they had like a big listening section where you can just like hand over LPs and they would play it to you and stand there were headphones for, for an hour or two. And then I listened to Bathory, Under the Sign of the Black Mark, and Raining Blood, and albums like that that I only read about in fan scenes, and, uh, and I was hooked. So, uh, yeah, that's how <laughs> that started. So what's actually your story when it comes to like growling and, and getting into metal bands? How did you end up in a metal band, and how did you end up first time trying to growl? Uh, I, I think I was just, you know, screaming along, and I, I loved it. Uh, I, I'm always, I've always kind of sang along to all the records that I love and the songs that I like and reading lyrics and stuff like that, just reading and, and singing along. Uh, every time I bought an album, I would, you know, sit with the cover and just like sing along with the lyrics and kind of get into it. Um, and for a while, like I, I was obsessed with learning every word for every song that I liked. Um, so, so when we decided to, to kind of start a band, me and Nicholas and Dean, um, I want me and Nicholas wanted to write lyrics and we had this whole idea about what the band should be, you know, like a concept albums and stuff like that. We were very pretentious and very focused like uh, on what we wa we thought the band could be. And uh so when we as we were writing, you know, riffs and songs, like we were all I was mostly thinking about the lyrics and like how it should be presented and how it should be screamed and and all I had in my head was like it should sound like Mila Petrosa from Creator, or it should sound like Rogge from Merciless, or uh, Martin Falker from Sabbat, or Mor uh, David Vincent from Morbid Angel. Like those were the the keys, like the the most important ones who uh, inspired us the most. 
And so that's what we thought about when we started writing. And then Anders Fredin uh, was in the band in the beginning and he, he, he sang and, and, and I was all, also, also doing like backup vocals. And I really loved it. And I realized I'm a shitty guitar player, but I'd love to sing, you know. Um, so I did that uh, all the time when we were rehearsing. But I think in terms of like inspiration, like I, early when I was 14 or 15 or something like that, I, I, uh, I went to see Grotesque. Was later became at the gates in Gothenburg rehearse and like stayed in their rehearsal room and just hung out and, and saw them rehearse and just seeing like Tom, Thomas Lindbergh just like go nuts in the rehearsal room just screaming his head off and I was like yeah I, I want to do that like that's what I want to do that sounds fantastic and and he really inspired me um, to, to kind of actually you know properly start a band and, and, and do it for real you know not just dream about it or think about it and um, so yeah, so that's how it started. Like um, on, the, and the, on the first album, Sky Dancer, me and Anders sing a lot together. And uh, then after that, I, I realized that I'm not a good, good enough guitar player and I wanted to sing and it kind of worked out well. So um, it's always been like that. And I think for, for me, the, what I loved about it when I, when I started was that it was so physical. Like you can get so into it and just like sweat and scream and kind of move and have, your entire body be kind of part of it it's not just singing it's like something else like when you because you have to push yourself so hard in, in order to make it sound the way that you want it to sound you know um so it became like a, a physical exercise but not in the exercise way but it, like it was something that you did a couple of days a week and you got so much out of your system like you were angry you're young and stupid and and it, it was um, an outlet to kind of like get rid of all the bullshit you were carrying around. So those like kind of rehearsal sessions when we went to the rehearsal room and played for four or five hours with, with the best of the entire week and like finally, and you felt so good afterwards. And you were kind of drained mentally and physically and, uh, and super tired, but it was worth it because you felt something and you, you kind of released something through it. Um, and for me, that was, incredibly important and, and made me kind of yeah really fall in love with it and kind of get into it more and more so when you started growling did it take a lot of time to sort of figure out the right technique for it and do you remember like losing your voice with the early re rehearsals when you started with the band it, it wasn't that bad in the beginning because it was basically just uh trying to sound like your heroes like trying to imitate and try to kind of have the same kind of feeling and vibe as the the singers that i looked up to um so it was a lot of practice and you know we were kids we had my parents garage as a rehearsal room so we could stay there all day if we wanted to so we rehearsed like six seven eight ten hours sometimes so it's just a matter of like finding that balance and, and finding like a technique that kind of worked that felt good that you could continue doing but of course yeah i, I screamed my throat off but but also like in the beginning we didn't have amplification we didn't have like a nice PA or anything like that. So I basically just screamed into into nothing, not even a microphone. And since we uh, rehearsed in my parents' garage, like it was important to keep the volume down in order to not uh, disturb the neighbors and such. So so we covered everything up and played as low as humanly possible. That meant you could scream and actually kind of, you know, over, you can, you can still hear me singing over the music, even though I didn't have a microphone. So that's how, um, low the volume was and 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 i think that was part of the reason like where you kind of early on learned a, a good technique in order to, to kind of sing super loud but also kind of maintain it and and I, I keep it working but it was so it was later like in 90 no like yeah 99 maybe 2000 or something like that that i started i don't know pushing myself too hard or we played too much or we toured too much i don't know but i started really losing my voice uh, every tour and it was very frustrating it was just um you know after one show you were oh fuck and then of course you're up all night screaming and drinking and like and that didn't help at all and so it took a few years before i realized how to, how to do it properly and do proper warm-ups and and take care of it and, and not get into that late night stupidity um so ever since that it's been working but there were, yeah there were a few rough years that i i just i couldn't figure it out i didn't know what to do and it just screwed up so uh, were there like some certain cover songs that you covered with the band where you sort of tried to like mimic the vocalists and and were there like some certain vocalists that you looked up to when you started doing it 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was creative. So we played Flag of Hate as a cover, of like one of the first songs that we ever played. We did um, some Nuclear Assault song, I think. We, we tried to do like a Merciless song. Um, we played, yeah, like Tankard, like yeah, German Thrash. Just to, because we wanted that, that aggressive intensity from like the speed metal and thrash. Um, then we, yeah, we did yeah, Sabbath and we did Paradise Lost, I think was some of the covers that we did. Um, just to try to get it right and try to kind of see how songs were made. Not, we never played covers live or, or anything like that or recorded anything. It was just like to, to kind of fill out the rehearsal time and, and to, yeah, to see how a, a song was constructed and how it worked and if we could get it close to, to the original or even, yeah, at, we, at least we tried, you know, to, to, to uh, try to understand what, what a song was about and how you, you kind of make it sound cool and um, it was great for, for confidence, you know, like you, you, you play a song that you love and you can actually pull it off, you know, of course we couldn't, but we, we felt like we did. Um, so that was a boon and, and, and uh, like a, yeah, good way to start the band, I think. Um, it's a good way to, you know, try out, see if you can pull it off, like see if, what, what level musician you are early on. So at what point did you sort of like realize that you cannot be Mille or, or you cannot be like the ones that you were sort of copying, that you had to sort of figure out your own own style and own voice? I was so disappointed. <laughs> I mean, no, of, of course, I mean, I, 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 I guess I, I, I don't know if I realized that, but I, I felt good kind of early on. Um, we rehearsed a lot and we recorded a lot. So when, I, when we did the gallery, I also did uh, Lunar Strain, and some other, some other stuff. So I, I was just like, I tried to sing as much as possible to kind of try to find my own thing and to make it kind of, um, yeah, into something my own. And, uh, and also like the band at the time and the way we thought of it and the way we talked about the band was that we were constantly trying to be original and to be different and not sound like anything else. So that that was part of it too, like just find, finding something that felt good. But of course, that yeah, it took a few tries, and uh, um, we experimented a lot, you know, with like overdubs and weird kind of like um, stuff in the studio for the first album, and then a little bit on the second album. But then it was like, yeah, that's maybe not what we need to do. Just focus on making it proper and good, and you know, good songs instead of trying to overproduce stuff. But uh, it, um, yeah, I, I mean. And, it, and I still kind of, you know, I still try to find the perfect way to sing and, and to, to do it even better and do it the way I really, really want it to be, you know. So it, it's, it's, it's an ongoing thing, you know, of course. So you're still experimenting with the voice all the time? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for every album at least. And then for, um, to try to, yeah, to become more comfortable with it and, and, um, and, and hopefully, yeah, just, yeah, sound better. <laughs> So, yeah. what were like your parents' reactions when they heard that their kid is becoming a death metal vocalist? I mean, it was just a face, right, to them. It was like, I mean, yeah, you get over it. Soon you will realize that this is not a, a thing you, you should be doing and get a real job and, and all that stuff. But they kind of liked that we hung out in the rehearsal room because we didn't go out that much. We were just rehearsing. And my parents really liked all the guys in the band and all the my friends so we, we just hang out in our house all the time so it's just a, like a matter for them to to have some kind of uh, control over us or just like know where we are and not you know um so i think for, for them it was a good thing that we but they thought it was just going to be for a year or something like that and then you find something serious to do that didn't work at all <laughs> but but they thought it was yeah i don't know like just silly or they didn't get it but now they kind of do, or after a few years, they were like, yeah, it's actually pretty good. And they came to see some of the shows and like, all right, I mean, people get this and it, they could really understand what, what's cool about it, like the, the energy and the intensity and, and kind of the, the, the passion that they see at a metal concert that they haven't seen anywhere else, of course, that kind of thing. So it, it, it kind of slowly but surely, like, they started to realize like what, what this is and why we're doing it. And that is actually something cool and worthwhile. You know? So what kind of memories do you have when it comes to like your first ever full European tour when it when you are like doing more gigs in a row where were you like sort of re prepared vocally to do a lot of shows in a row or did you face a lot of difficulties it, it, No it wasn't difficult then we were 24 25 or something like that you you could do anything basically 
um, our first ever tour was with Six Feet Under. Um, so I had fucking Chris Barnes, you know, playing after us every night. So so that was a big inspiration, like to to fucking kick ass every night, and um, and it was yeah no it was really cool, just super intense and uh, and fun. I think we did like twenty five or thirty shows or something like that on the first tour, and it was just a blast. It was only later, like our second tour, was with Cannibal Corpse of all bands, and I remember like George was. His voice was like fucked up, and I was like, "Wow, of course that happens. If you sing like that, it's gonna screw you up." I was like, "But luckily for me, I, I feel fine now, you know, at, at the time." But of course, like a couple of years later, I, I was in the exact same same spot. But um, but it, it it it's always a learning experience, you know. You you realize like what you can do on stage and like what what not, and what you should kind of think about and and, uh, and try not to do. But at the same time, like part of part of the thing of, of being on stage and singing is that you go all the way and kind of go as like hard as possible otherwise there's no fun if you're holding back if you're not like pushing yourself then what's the point like i really um hate when we just do a normal show and it's just great and it doesn't really kind of you know it we have to kind of start a fire somewhere you know it has something has needs to happen or it, you need to feel something more than just like okay yeah we pulled it off it was uh, tight and very uh, solid it's like can't do that like that's not why we're doing this you know it has to be something more and then so sometimes that means like you just like try to i don't know like shut everything out and just like focus on on, on singing or sometimes like the audience will take you there you know um and maybe not inspire you but it fucking incite you into to kind of pushing yourself so sometimes i'll, I'll wake up and just like my entire throat is like swollen but it's just muscles because you've been like pushing it so hard and that i mean that's just muscles and it, it will go back to normal in a day so it's fine but it um but i love that I, I that's what i want every night to be if possible so are there like some certain like foods or drinks which you wouldn't like want to have before the show that you have noticed that it affects for example your vocal cords or does something to them i honestly never never uh I've never felt like something that will make a difference. Obviously, you can have like a nice, cool tea, and maybe it will calm your voice if you're if you're feeling itchy or if you have a cold or stuff like that. You know, it feels good, like with some honey and all that stuff. But that's just like soothing. It doesn't change anything. It doesn't make your uh, your voice sound different. You know. Um Sometimes if you're swollen, sure you can drink something super ice cold, and that will kind of take the swelling down, like it will do for anything else. But I don't think there are any miracle cures. There are tons of stuff, and some people swear by a certain thing. And for me, I I drink beer and try to not scream too much during the day or talk too much during the day. Then that's enough. Or and, and just like a good warm up routine, it's it's all that that I need. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like sometimes, yeah, you. Sometimes when we go to like a hotel, the you know the the manager would like put like a uh, what do you call it like re hydrating machine, so it's like a humid humidifier in the room. It's like oh this is good for your voice, and it's like okay if I'm if I'm I have a dry voice I'll drink some more. You know it's uh, yeah I don't think there are any secrets like that. Everybody has their own of course, but for me it, there's nothing like that. If I warm up properly and I feel good, relaxed, have a few beers, I'll I'll, I'll be fine. So do you always prepare for the show and, and do a certain kind of like warm-up routine or, or yeah. if there is a tour, and yeah. do you do the warm-up routine like in the first day and then it's like fine no. for the rest e of the tour? E every day, it has to, like once or twice every day before the show, uh, depending on how I feel. But mostly it's, yeah, like, yeah, before for the show, like an hour before or something like that start and just uh, to warm up to just like, it's good for just confidence and just know that it feels good. But also it's, it's, a, it's a matter of like, um, Yeah, finding where your voice kind of sits in your throat and also like breathing because you know you st especially like the first song you start running and like and just screaming like super loud you like get into it and fucking it, it can destroy you if you're not warmed up you know so you need that um so, so yeah I, i do it every day it's it's partly because of it feels better and and you can kind of relax knowing that okay at least the voice is going to work if everything else fucks I'm, at least that's going to be okay Um, but also it, it totally helps like just getting into to, to to kind of be ready to sing 
instead of like just doing it immediately with the warm ups is is uh, it's been a lifesaver for me. When I started like that, I've never had any problems since since then, and that's, that was 15 years ago or something like that, and it's been awesome. So, very important. So, last question: Are there like any advices that you would like to give to a young metal vocalist who is just about to start their career? I think practice is is, is super important, just like as much as you possibly can. Um, warm ups, of course, and uh, and for me, like. Life changer was like getting a, a good like inner system. Make sure that you don't you know, sing it through monitors and stuff like that. You can be have a consistent sound and just have like that sound every every night. Especially if you're touring, knowing that you can walk on stage and it's gonna sound exactly like you're used to. At least for me, that's uh, crucial. Like something that then I can trust it. I, I don't have to be worried about am I gonna hear myself today or not, or is it gonna sound super shitty or fantastic. Like now it sounds fantastic every night and that makes a difference. But I think yeah, just rehearsing and trying to kind of sing with your your heroes and your your um, uh, your favorite singers and just try to try to get there i think that 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 really helps with so like find and finding like your own technique and voice and you know um but it's interesting i, I talked to a lot of singers over the years and and sometimes they would you know kind of show like oh this is how it sounds like yeah but i have no idea i want to hear it together with music and the way you think about it and how it works like that that's that's how you can change not just someone comes up in your screen and go Rawr! I was like what I, I don't know <laughs> to me that's kind of weird it's hard to, hard to gauge how good that is but uh, but yeah I don't know for, for me yeah practice and fucking and get into it and, and also like have music that that you love you know I think for, for me like whenever I, I do kind of guest appearances and, and do different albums it it's only if I feel like it kind of fits what I'm doing that I, I would say yes to it. And there would be, and then there's been so many things that I listened to and went like, okay, this is kind of cool, but I, I have nothing to contribute because that's not what I do. So it's, I think it's a good way. To, it's it's good to to find that the kind of music that that fits you as well, like or music that you can fit into. You know, find it find the right place for it and not just um, yeah, not not sing when you're not supposed to basically <laughs> you know so hey thanks a lot for the thank interview you and, and have a great show here at john smith rock fest can't wait this is awesome so great to be here back here it's gonna be fantastic thank you Kippies.